dilemmas to the manager, dilemmas to Gangalo, dilemmas to this lady who has come, can we get out? And how do we get out? So there is high reasoning that is getting involved into our heads, into the lives of every student and then. So such the dilemma study, a good controversial subject, you get a good controversial subject that people normally talk about. I'm now talking about social sciences. They can go into issues of homosexuality, into issues of I don't know what. So things that have been controversial issues, like if people are doing agriculture, you go into the, the, the genetic modified foods and whatever, and this level foundation for, for the whatever they, foundation for possible solutions, and then the students decide by themselves what to do. So here you are helping people to debate and come up, come up with conclusions. <coughs> so they, in the end, the students will get judgment, and if they get that judgment, they also know how to later on to get something that is an alternative or doubtful by those judgments. And that's what we are leading to. Uh, yeah. Key points, I think, I guess, I think, yes. You have to get the learning objectives, you have to provide leadership, and you have to encourage and to guide that you refrain from actively participating. So this, if you are a teacher, if you are a teacher, you are not a serious participator. You are somebody who is guiding, who is, who is guiding. So you are facilitating. So you guide and encourage, but you refrain from participating and also finding yourself into the, uh, fighting debates with others with the students. But you are the in between to direct the debates that are happening within the class. Yeah. Yeah. I'm quite adding what would be the best model of assessment in such a scenarios. I, I, you have taken us much deeper into other things, <coughs> but you have been learning on how to assess the class, the progressive assessments. So when you are assessing the students, you see how the students participate and how are ideas collected. Somebody can participate without ideas. So, and, uh, so I think that is an area where target will, will give us expertise. Uh, that, that is the progressive assessment that you have to do in a class. Uh, and, and, <coughs> simply, and that's what I like to do. to teach us much more about this. Uh, how we can assess students on the way they participate rather than learning is to make it small, that improves that communication, it provides uh, problem solving abilities and teamwork and other things. This is what I am speaking to. I just want to make this quote from uh, John Dare. <coughs> People in education normally call this gentleman so much. He says, careful inspection of methods which are permanently successful in the form of education, we reveal that they depend for their efficiency upon the fact that they go back to the type of the situation which causes reflection out of school in ordinary life. They give the people something to do, not something to learn. And the doing is of such and the doing is of such a nature as to demand thinking. And this is what Kester does. It demands serious thinking. It demands serious thinking. That it does not end at the end of the class, but you go within the home. And this one, I give the case that you are not swimming by yourself, but it's also a very powerful one. I'm trying to, to rush a bit. And, uh, and try to, to do the two things that I've been doing. Passive learning, which is active, and active learning, which is fruitful thinking. The passive learning, or the better learning, we see people will have received ideas, and that's what we have been doing in our history of, of learning. But we do this, we offer ideas, and the students deal with those ideas. In passive learning, we we'll answer questions. This other one will raise questions and also students raise questions. Passive learning, hearing, analy hearing analyzes, analysis. Analysis. Uh, here is making analysis. Examining texts, engaging with texts. Accepting assumptions, 
challenging assumptions. So somebody talks, you go back and say, oh, I remember Prophet so and so, he says this. You know, without any, <laughs> any critique, you just got it the way it was got that that's, you continue going along with it. I remember one time I was with somebody here. <laughs> So challenging assumptions, faculty student dialogue, so the, the, the teacher, the professor, the lecturer is the lead, they are arranged with students, but here students are now arranged with each other. Then the teacher is the locus, is the focal closer person, and this other side is the student who is now a focal person. I just want to give sites which we shall see. But these sites, go, uh, all of them, to access the sites, you have to pay. But these are schools, universities that have worked on cases. We shall also see that we have, in our own small way, worked on cases. I think we have 78 cases right now. Uh, and we believe that we can build as many cases as possible. We are not talking about the matters of us, I'm talking about uh, the partnership that we have been working with in Pasiga with Imara people. We have got 38 plus uh, cases. Uh, we believe that if the university also takes up this, we can also have our Uganda matters case in the poster. We have started by writing their own cases, and then we don't have a problem. We don't have a problem of paying for cases that are that are written in America elsewhere, but written from us on our own context. And I think that's what we are learning, we are trying to go to. And if our idea of having a continuous learning center, or I don't know what we can call it, at our, at our university to help us build these things, we believe. Of course, we have to buy the, the deans and the management into it when we shall know that we shall be moving forward. And that's what we are going to learn today, evening, how to make <coughs> out, how we build those cases so that we can also make our own repository. If not, we can also get involved with others. These are cases where you can get different cases. Uh, political science, medical control, diversity. Here we talked about sciences, natural center, for study, engineering, business. And uh, the last, the last one. <laughs> and the last one I'm saying is said, the success of the lecturer, Mario Montessori, said, the greatest sign of success for a lecturer is not is to be able to say, the students are now working as if I do not exist. If the students work for themselves, you will set the scene and the students start working for themselves, I think you have achieved the greatest success. Thank you very much. <laughs> the cases that the case that I've used too, I used all of these cases that I've been through them. But let me go to the one I know most. There is universal education in Uganda. It's a better case. Mm -hmm. A part of the better case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. graphs and others, all to put not there as materials necessary to help or guide the learner on how to enter into the real world. So as I said, all cases present the real world, bring the real world into the classroom. So we use that technology with audio, visual, uh, pictures and others, graphs and whatever, to bring the the real work into the classroom. So like this case, 
is bringing the world of UPE in our classroom to generate discussion, to generate debates, to generate critical thinking, to generate problem solving and other things that we saw all the cases. Um, and in this case, the way it is, it is done, it is built up in the what we call the module. Into the module. So we have module one, module two, and module three. And what we have seen us, we call it a learning page. This is a page where I so this is a learning page and it gives an introduction to what is the case. Can maybe Richard I wish you look for us something on that learning page? <coughs> Several sub-Saharan African countries have instituted measures aimed at providing basic education to their population by eliminating primary school fees in government aided public schools. Malawi eliminated these fees in 1994, Uganda in 1997, Tanzania in 2000, and Cameroon, Burundi, Ghana, Rwanda, and Kenya in 2000. The challenge of universal primary education has, however, been that of strained budgets, unskilled or semi-skilled and inadequate manpower and infrastructure. The bedrock of these challenges is mainly uninformed, ambitious political decisions that are made to spice campaign manifestos, especially of those vying for the presidency in the respective countries. As this case shows, through research, though research may be in place to guide decisions relating to provision of UPE, political leaders <coughs> that choose or are forced by the prevailing circumstances to overlook research recommendations. Challenge of UPE infrastructure, that's okay. Resulting political leaders, the resulting product is a sudden drop in education quality indicators. This case is meant to exemplify the role of research in making public policy decisions. It will specifically aim at enabling students understand the role of evidence research, evidence of research, or lack of their thereof. The case will further show how lack of proper research affects policy implementation. Image source, John C. Makula, May 26, 2013. Okay, that's one. That's one. So, yeah. no, it's important. Yeah, yeah, the, source. <laughs> yeah, the, source. <laughs> the source is important because that's yeah. a case of emergency in my ethics. So, called this is our learning page. So, learning page expresses the background. The learning page expresses the context. The learning page expresses. So we, I believe that this somehow gives the context into which the, the, the case is framed. And the picture itself, the picture itself is also specifically chosen to show to show what is happening at the UPE. And this is a real classroom within Eastern part of Uganda. So I'm the primary school located in Nsagari. And there are more, more schools that are even worse than this one. Uh, so, <coughs> so now, if we go to the mobile one, click on the mobile one. So, mobile one gives, uh, gives the specifics of what the quantity you are looking at. The, 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 the problem that you are looking at, depending on how you complete it. So for us, this was like the problem that we thought would come into the picture. And you will be recording of that gentleman, Maroba. Maroba is a member of our university council. So you can play them, you can, students can read this, you can also play the multimedia. Secondary, 
Christian particular. Two, the process of coming up with the process very, very detailed. Teams will later uh, set up, target certain countries as well as, uh, as the learning grounds. So, so uh, at least uh, the development of the system for India, but as well as Britain, and as Uganda, as Nigeria, as Zimbabwe, Zambia, and so very clear, of course, and Tanzania, and that kind of thing. So, so those teams went out first of all. Then came back. Then now internally, again, teams were set up to go to each region on the regional basis and type it and look through. So this person is not in the text. With the so the text in the area will create six. that problem. Uh, so and we talk. So it is a kind of a yes. mismatch. But we are creating like the problems from students, some can be and those fail. Yeah. And you couldn't read it from here, but I'm just showing what we are talking about. Uh, and you also recall, and you also know, that the scant type of students that we have come in with, the are the people who have to listen uh, to the media, to the media, to the videos, and the music, and use what they are using to do for what they like, to spur them the land. Around. 
or cases of some queries that we can either by camera, by picture, by story that you can write and other things so that we can build cases which we shall be using in our classes. I mean, understood? Peter Karima, some questions? Now, after presenting cases and showing the problems, do we have success stories so that we can also look at what is happening in Uganda and also look at another country where things are okay? And then I gave some strong cases earlier where somebody said attention improves where somebody says attendance improved, another one that you don't see students learning like this in class, mm. there's active learning and other things. Mm. The bad thing is that we have not used CSA much of them in Uganda. I do believe that if we use them maybe next year, we shall be having a serious story to talk about. I gave for uh, the other time when we were trying to sustain the staff, I brought some students from education, from SAS, what goes through the system. And they gave their personal, their personal experiences in learning. I think that is one, of, one way of showing the benefits that we can get out of this. Mm -hmm. I hope to see them three, four years after. They might be having a serious story that we can learn from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so far, so good. So far, so good. I want to bring another multimedia. It's not a, an e case, but a multimedia case. Uh, maybe that one shall. So, is the problem between you and Singapore about you, PP? Oh, we are just looking at it as a failed project. Is there anything they are doing to make sure that things Now that is what you give your students as homework to continue the discussion. Because if you say it has failed, you have closed for them to engage the opinion. Yeah. Your your decision at the end should be minimal. Let the students arrive at their own conclusion. So that is what the, 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 the thing is, we have been so comfortable in providing answers. Eh? You always want to have a closure. Mm. But this one is saying that you, you open up and let people now go and research. So at the end of the case, you say, this is the situation of Uganda. Go and find out. And you will find that in the next session, when you're discussing about maybe policies or politics or something, the students will again pick up from there. So that is why you have to link whatever you are teaching with the objectives of your course. It is not an isolated thing. It is situated in whatever you wanted to attain in that course. I have a concern about the, the cases. Yeah. One of these cases uh, have maybe a sensitive information. And one of them I love to the case center. It is based in the US, but they gather cases from different uh, authors. But based on the industries or companies, organizations for use in learning. So somewhere they put uh, uh, a disclaimer on how it's supposed to be used. Many of like, say you don't have to test for the ineffectiveness of an organization, or, but it's mainly for learning purposes. So now, if we looked at our scenario here, how do we build such cases? Because if you read many of the cases, it's the reality of what is happening. First and foremost, you all have to get permission. Yes. The cases are not something you're going to do. Like the videos on NTV, those are public. Mm -hmm. You just cite. Because anyone could go. Yes. And get it. If there's a scandal mm -hmm. on the on the media, if there is nothing hidden, 
Mm. But when you go like for these placements yes. and you're working with a company and they are facing a challenge which you think is important that the students can provide input. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and that also takes us was recent last week after we had a discussion with uh, people from the Daniel Distribution Service Bill. And uh, one of the discussions was about intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So I can take the photograph of Professor Max and I use it the way I like it mm -hmm. because it is mine. Even if the photograph is yours, mm -hmm. there's no way you can sue me about, about using your photograph. Or I can record you today and that will be now my property. So, I think it's as long as it is a person mm -hmm. who did not consent, the yes. person has been If I don't have to consent about it, but why would you steal this image? Because there is also the, the cyber security. Yes, yes, yes. yes. There is a law that protects. The one who breaches yes. such. Yeah. The one who breaches such. You have to get my personal consent. Yeah. But they said clearly that I can take your photograph. And, and they gave us a, an example of finding photographs of people. Let's say, for example, displayed at uh, photo studios. The owner of the first photo studio has the rights to that photo. You, the, the, person, the person appears that you don't have. I know, I, I said it, I presented yourself. You don't have to consent. But then in that case, mm -hmm. you consented by presenting yourself to the studio. But then if you find someone in the, in the, in the, in the, the public, you yeah. take his picture. Now that you are sitting here, and then you take my picture, yes. uh, sign it, and then you misuse it. I have every right to sue you. Yes. Yeah, because it was in this setting, we are not even talking about taking pictures. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just take my image. That is why they sued. They, they, remember those new pictures of the singer? Mm -hmm. If they sued the person who, who posted them. Actually, yes, yes. so recently, yeah. about two weeks ago, there is also a similar case of a picture being the, the owner of the picture suing yeah. the guys who are, you know, this was for Akbar, so the guy wants money. I also remember um, Sebagara suing, uh, I think, MTN for the voice and other hey, What's happening to that case? <laughs> 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 I think maybe we have to look at the intellectual property, the laws of Uganda, because there's a lot that we can learn from them. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this question, we don't have the answer. Same with the answer, that's how you can get them. There are other cases, we call it a new case that's quite different from this other one. In the one that we are going to look at, we call it the Andorra case. I will maybe print it a bit longer. We are not going to go to it, but I will just play it a little bit longer for us to, to see what is here. There is no written thing about it except uh, the translations that we are giving on, on the case. Everyone can say there are no texts on the site, yeah. but they are embedded in the in, in the in the case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very big
twende kwa BOT Kenya Dollars Coca Cola tuko na Young Tires tuko na Bidco na pia kuna zingine ambazo ziko ndani ndani tuko na Shell Shell and BP tuko na Total by the Nairobi City Council 
And as such, when the Delta Act came to be, the NCC took over its management and singularly collected over 90% of the waste in the city until the mid-1980s. However, due to significant slackening of services provided by the NCC, private companies and community-based organizations started providing waste collection services. Forty years later, the dump occupies about 30 hectares or 1.3 million cubic meters of waste. The location, multiplicity of actors and pollution is testimony to the challenge of waste management the county council of Narrabi faces. All day, a stream of waste collection trucks, some belonging to the NCC, the National Service, NYS, and private collection companies offered at the dump with no order, dumping every conceivable type of waste, industrial, agricultural, domestic, and medical, all piling up into a mountain of hazardous trash that the residents have to live with. At the same time, it has been estimated that about 100,000 men and women work and live at the dumpster. The weekly exercise of waste burning on sections of the site by the city council and the fumes of foul smelling smoke and fumes released into the air create a daily environmental catastrophe that people in the dump site and the surrounding settlements have to contend with. The inadequacy of the dumping sites to accommodate the ever increasing volume of waste generated has further led to the pollution of Niagara River which then feeds into three other rivers, Malaria, Gong, and Nairobi. Nairobi River chokes from all manner of pollutants, including domestic, agricultural, industrial, solid, and chemical waste, making it a major health risk to Nairobi residents, especially the poor who rely on its waters for domestic and subsistence agricultural purposes. To date, the National Environmental Management Authority now I, I don't know what to do this, so I can't see here. What I will teach here and mention this other thing, but like that is the, another way mm -hmm. of showing students as something and then they can replicate it in two different forms. Yeah. Different forms. And make it and whatever. Instead of taking them about the equation and then you so, uh, you get things and the students do, do it by themselves. That's a. Uh, <coughs> They do those things by themselves. So these are the kind of cases that we are talking about. If you are talking about the E cases, if you are talking about the, the written. written cases, as I have said, we shall later on talk about role plays, how we how to collect role play in the class, how to write a role play in the class, a role play that can be, that can be uh, simulated within the class and other things, so that there is a lot of possible things that have been generated within the study. Can we get some in our 
own areas because that is why you are shadowing okay. and wanted to bring you to the next level yeah. of what the exercise is. Okay. Yeah, because you have to gain part of the outputs for the project is cases that we think we will be using our process. <laughs> okay. For me, I thought that since we are now amateurs and beginners, could you start by using what is existing and after using, maybe we develop. Okay? I want to let you know that after we, the way we, when we did these cases in MRPP, we never had the, the cases that we had, they would even go with them. Yes. They would show us and go with the thing. Mm. <laughs> you know that so, cases so are time bound. All these cases are sold because it's people's research. They are getting promoted based on the cases. They are not free ones. Are you other than the MRPG. 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 Other I want to read for him one which I quoted mm. for the exam these people have just done. Mr. Oboy has taught the mathematics classes, including primary seven for a decade. Although placed by his school teacher as one of the best, the community members have evidence that he, he often drinks his head off and so should be transferred to another school. As a professional stakeholder, how would you harmonize these three categories? Mm. We call that a, a bullet point case. A bullet point. <laughs> it, it is a small, mm. uh, not, much but data. not much data in it yeah. that can generate thinking. Yes. So, <clears throat> so we, we need to get, we, those are needed, but also we need to get those that mm. have serious debates, mm. with the, like the one of Ugaru, which is a small one. Yeah. I can even give you another one that is even about 30 pages. Mm. You go through it, so it's a new experience. <laughs> 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 no, it's a bubble, but with the serious learning with, with the information and ideas. <laughs> <laughs> you can create one which seems like this. And we also hope so that as a group will grow mm -hmm. because we are going to have different kinds of people shadowing mm -hmm. across the years. So that we want to build the capacity in a sense that we build cases. Mm -hmm. Now that we are getting the this, what are the characteristics of a case? Mm -hmm. And make sure you evaluate. Because it is not just anything. There are certain things that make it a case. And those are the things that we shall be delving into. Mm -hmm. What makes it a case and what makes it just a story that you could, you know? Why, why, why would I not go into the newspaper and yeah. cut that one? Mm -hmm. For example, those multimedia things, these are things that you can see in the media. So why do I have to write a story on it? Then why do I have to present it? Why? There is, there is a story behind yeah. what you are building so that you can generate serious thinking. Okay. Mm. I think we have a view of what we want. Mm. But the challenge is to put that into perspective. Uh, I think with your support, we will be there. <laughs> it all starts from your course mm. and the course objectives. Mm. It doesn't start from an imagination. Mm. Mm. It is looking at your learning outcomes mm. and seeing where would a case be the best it's way to this. present. Because it shouldn't be something devoid of the context mm. you want to teach. When he was doing UPE, at the bottom you saw he said the research ethics mm -hmm. and the importance of research in policy creation. Mm -hmm. So you have to anchor your case to a learning outcome. outcome. So whatever you are working with, that learning outcome mm -hmm. cannot be lost. Okay. Yeah. So you don't think about the case mm -hmm. first. You think about the learning outcome and then you build a case that will help you achieve that learning outcome. So what do you want to achieve by connecting the alcohol to teaching mathematics? <laughs> 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 
And I think, um, like Prof says, the, the cases is, is showing us here are all in our positive. Mm -hmm. So we can go accessing all those ones. It's as, like the mini cases. As many as we may wish to, just to learn from them. And then when, there's, when they're doing what you see there, uh, you are thinking is, where is ICT here now? Or where is mathematics? Or why can I put when we were learning these things, people were teaching quantitative. Mm -hmm. They thought there were no cases. Mm -hmm. But how can you get the case of mathematics? Mm -hmm. We have them here. Mm -hmm. Let me see what I can show you one. Yeah, on quantitative methods. On quantitative mm -hmm. methods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the one that applies. It is much easier to create and apply maps mm -hmm. uh, to science. The thinking will not be as complicated as the challenge of quantifying the quality. I don't know if it's quantitative, I'm not sure if it's quantitative. That one is still quantitative to science, but if you want to see something. This same, maybe I also show you. The other one you see, we used to have the models on the side. We call this a, the dial the, the dial method of, of, of presenting it. Like you remember phone. that the other phone we used to dial like this? Mm. Those one as old as me. And this one you can start with any any of the dial. So the case are normally made into a such a way that you can click on any and begin from there. So this is the dial method rather than the other one that is modular. So it's... The other one is a slide format. The person does not have a video. I have not explained the actual DLC properly. I've not understood. I've not understood that way of presenting. Did you ever see the diamond phone? Those phones of the Yes, yes. This is where it's in. So, how does it connect? And now I was concentrating on their phone. And now what's happening? Where is their phone here? No, they say. The other, the other landing page that we saw, mm. I had the page and the modules. Mm. So the, 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 the cases are presented in a linear way. Okay. Here the presentation is different. It is not presented according to the modules. It is presented according to uh, any of the modules. Let me say that you can learn all. So each aspect of that dial mm. is independent of the other. Mm. And that is why you can start from anywhere. Whereas in the slider, the one who was using, it means you have to go module one, finish it, go mm -hmm. to module two, finish it, module three, finish it, like that. Okay. But in the dialogue, each aspect is kind of a standalone. Okay. And there are very many other resources where you can get things from. I, I don't know how many of us have ever used the TED Talks. Tell it us. Yes. Can you get the um, have, have, have internet? Can you search for daily talks on your YouTube? Thank you. You go to buy a Commons so that you can know which ones are free mm -hmm. and which ones are 
I'm planning a new research project because I am interested in learning more about children with attention deficits. That sounds like an interesting subject. What research approach are you planning to use? I am a quantitative researcher, so I am planning to use numbers, test scores and measurements. This way, I will be able to assign a number to each child. How can you describe something as complex as a person using numbers? Oh, that's easy. I could give them all the test in order to get a score, or I could get a score by asking their parents to complete a survey with questions about their child's distractibility, or I could use a stopwatch to measure how much time they attend to classwork in one hour of classroom time. All of these are ways that I could operationalize attention. By operationalizing the construct of attention, I can get a number that describes the attention of each child. This will make it much easier to study this construct. And if I use a strong sampling technique, and if I can get a large enough sample, then I will be able to use my sample to make generalizations about the population from which I drew my sample. I am still not convinced that you can use numbers to describe children. I am a qualitative researcher, and I would suggest that you work with a small group of children so that you can ask them about their thoughts and experiences. Their own words can provide you with a much richer source of information than any test or survey score. After you interview a number of children, you will find that certain patterns or themes will emerge. These themes can help you to describe the thoughts and experiences of the children themselves. Mm -hmm. The children's own words can provide us with information about their perspective in a way that numbers could never do. I don't think so. In any group of children you can notice that children have different levels of distractibility. <laughs> I really want to help professionals to identify individual children who have problems with distractibility that are so severe that they need additional support. In order to do this, I need to get data from a large number of children. Then, I can determine the scores that would indicate that a child's ability to maintain attention was two standard deviations below the yeah. mean. Schools need this information in order to determine which children will benefit from additional services. While there may be some value to qualitative research approaches, I cannot use a qualitative approach to develop a normal test and will be able to compare the score of a specific child to national norms based on a large sample of children. For this, we'll need to use methods in which we represent each child with a number. Of course, if you want to develop a normal test, you will need to use quantitative approaches. Your research approach always needs to match the type of research question that you are asking, but the questions that you can answer using quantitative approaches are so limited. Quantitative methods are based on the idea that if you measure something carefully and control other factors, you can get at some simple, distilled truth. We are all complex people living in a complex world, and there really is not any single test score that can tell you if a child needs additional support at school, and there is certainly no single test that can tell you what kind of attention deficits. I know that a single test score has limited value, but test scores are still useful tools for professionals who work with children. Also, once I have used a measurement to identify children with significant problems with attention deficit, then I can do other research studies. I can use a team test to see if the GPAs of these children differ from those of children without this issue. I can use correlations to see if there is a relationship between attention deficit and factors such as consumption or intelligence. I can use different quantitative methods to address a wide range of research questions. Using these methods, I can answer research questions about what is most typical within the population of children with attention deficit. Yes, but you need to remember to think about the relationship between the researcher and the people being researched. In quantitative studies, 
There is generally a powerful researcher who is studying a set of research subjects with very little power. As a qualitative researcher, I work to empower the individuals in my studies. I call the individuals that I work with participants, and in some qualitative methods the participants have a role as co-investigators. My role as a researcher is to empower my participants and inform professionals about the thoughts, priorities, and experiences of these individuals. We empower individuals by sharing their words, not by representing each individual with another. I have a lot more to say on this subject. For example, I could talk about the problems with generalizability in qualitative research. I could also talk about these issues for hours. But they are probably getting tired of listening to us. Okay, if they want to know more, they can always read their textbooks. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> See you. So now, when you, when you see something like that, it's about paradigm wars. The wars between quantitative research and qualitative research. Yeah. They don't see the middle ground. That you, you can incorporate some qualitative aspects in a quantitative aspect, or vice versa. So those are called paradigm wars in research. There are people who think good research is completely quantitative. Then there are those who believe good research is completely quantitative. I am planning a new research. So what's the truth? That's why we all it's better than the next. <laughs> <laughs> what is the truth? The truth is always one. There's <laughs> one more about children with attention deficits. That sounds like an The truth is always one. Yes, you can understand that. They are saying that because of such a question. Yes. I think the lady had said that. <laughs> What is it? The head of the said that you can say a lot. Yes. He has a lot. So now you can see that you have started generating the discussion. Yes. <laughs> so I, we are going to use, I've not edited anything on these slides, but these are the slides that we use in our training. They were given to me and to others in our training, and I've not done any edition. So we're trained by the Harvard Project. Harvard Project is the a school in Canada that trained us on how to write case cases and case writing. So uh, and within the MRPP framework. So I feel that if I do some exercise, I might do my things to myself. So I decided that I can keep it. Uh, I feel I should do present this to our, our the thing that we're using. The attention is like listening to the body. <coughs> the, the zoom. The zoom is right. I think. Mean, <coughs> I, I, I like the school because <coughs> it's a good to hear screen. You go to a screen, you are no, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I see that, I can see that you are seeing why now we will be facing that side like this, like this, but when it is on Zoom, mm -hmm. the attention is, is really done like this. Yeah. towards problem solving. So uh, uh, currently as we have been looking at the thinking and other things, so there is that intended pragmatic situation from the employers from our society that we need to solve problems rather than being part of the problem or having someone to help us solve the problem. Yes, there is uh, kind of things that need to be the problem, problematic, oriented towards problem solving, rather than people who are just stuck in the mind. So, 
And uh, in this case, cases have been given to be one form or one way that can improve the way we deliver. They can deliver here we are using the public affairs, yes, public affairs, but even affairs that are private, in which people can work together. And they are, we talked about this, they are in cases, they are in cases and peace studies. I don't know much about these studies though, but I like to explain that to you in my use of these things in, 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 uh, since I was in use of cases, I have been using written cases and e cases. And maybe another one that is not <coughs> is uh, um, the wrong place. Wrong place. So professional education is not education for understanding alone. It is preparation for accomplished and responsible practice in the service of others. So when we are teaching, we are not only teaching for those to just gain knowledge, just no, 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 no. You go out when you are in the encyclopedia, but you teach so that somebody can also use the word that you have learned to go and solve societal problems. You can be a help to other people. So as we talked about it in the morning, the didactic and the people thinking, the didactic way will train you to become a professional. You can define anything that is that was created. But if you can only any of definitions and memorize those definitions, you don't use those definitions to solve anything, you have not actually done. Mm -hmm. so, uh, am, am I speaking? Yeah. So we, you can get all the information that you can go in the park, just talk, talk about those big terms in English and whatever. But if they learn your lips and they cannot solve, so there is a lot that you have learned, you have, you have, you have, you have, you have been taught, but little you have learned to put into practice. So when you talk about the cases, is that we are thinking that you can, we can use our education for somebody to use what you have learned to do to your own service and the service of others. So professionals must come to understand in order to act. And they must act in order to serve. So I think this is a very powerful statement by this person that you see on the screen that professionals must come out to understand in order to act and they must act in order to serve. Contains original video, all the content to bring the storage life and various learning assessment embedded in the narrative. Please let me not try to not to, to compare. So a narrative that we put on the side, this is narrative that we put on the side. Mm. Remember the narratives that we had on the learning page, and whenever we we'll get a video where we we'll, we'll get the narrative, that narrative, that, that narrative account developed through an original source material about a critical panel. We shall know what a panel is. So it's a, a, a critical problem. The main storyline is provided through video or audio clips, photos, and other resources. So we have a narrative, and if we have that narrative, then you have a problem which you are calling a, a quadrate, and that quadrate is always presented in the audio, in the video, in the picture, in the graph, or other things. So, uh, <clears throat> so that builds up what we are calling an ecosystem. Are you born now? Okay. You said the problem is that you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. So you can see this and there. There is a narrative and there is a picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the narrative uh, explains kind of the background, the context, and the picture shows the problem. And if it is a video, it is also showing that serious problem. Okay. 
So what is the use of the narratives? What is the use of the narrative that you, you put across? The narrative serves to integrate the functioning of individuals within the groups by teaching specific skills and general values and creating common blueprints and shared understanding. So uh, <clears throat> when you are writing that small clip that you called the narrative, it has a lot of purposes that be loaded loaded with information, the information that touches the mind, the information that touches the context, the information that... And then, later on, when it goes into the videos, into what you call the, the assets, the assets that you are using, then the assets bring about that problem seriously. They show, they visualize it, they organize it, they show it, they, they show it. Uh, they show they show that word well, and that it makes the case uh, more reliable, more uh, understandable, and people can deal with it, can jump around with it. Are we together? So we do this with what we are looking at as technology in our study. But let, let's not take uh, really a class on exams now, because we are last year on delivery, mm -hmm. on teaching, on, on developing that critical analysis, critical thinking. Let's go much into the delivery form, the pedagogy, mm -hmm. rather than the, the exams to become data. But we, I am sure, and I hope that somewhere, someday, whether in my life or not in my life, whether I'm here or whether I'm using this time to uh, we shall be able to change the landscape of assessment. We shall have to be yeah. managing the, the level of assessment and how to do assess and how do we the students are assessed for the data model. The Kenyan the Kenyan government has gone a bit further than us now. They are introducing at what are doing the work. They are moving national examinations. National examinations for me are the users. Somebody spent seven years in school and that is <laughs> seven years is determined by two hours, two days. Two days they examine it and you can become a failure or a, or a successful person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Technology enhanced because it really a social process. Now, now we know that the processes of the students currently is triggered by nothing else but the movies from Latin America, the movies mm -hmm. the Nigeria, the movies that are in India. Oh, time is out. Can we get some minutes break? The white course students now are using into the multimedia, the face validity of accounts, and uh, reduces even the data information because we are looking at information that is uh, sifted, that is improved professional skills and competence. So the use of technology in enhanced learning is able to improve the professional skills and competences that carries very well within our project of employability. Um, technology enhanced goals, <coughs> it increases timelines, relevance, feasibility of accounts. Yeah, this is the same thing. So the science of this teaching is built in multimedia environment. Multimedia environment, I'm talking about a combination of many things possible, the video, the narrative, the audio, and other things that um, are in multimedia, so that we can balance the cognitive load. Uh, the, the people who are in education and philosophy know understand, understand fundamental what we are doing by the cognitive part of learning. So it balances the whole thing well and the scaffold, scaffolding content, visualizing learning objectives, and also implemented in an interactive classroom where the social learning, practical based problem solving, and meta cognition. So if we add this multimedia or the learning learning with the other written cases, you see that you, you have a variety 
of things that you have in, to, to solve for the experience in the class, including what we shall see later on, the role of place. You have a number of uh, strategies in which you can achieve the last learning. So I think, uh, let me not go into the critique, we shall do this by to, uh, tomorrow. Okay, how far do you go? We are creating an we are creating an assessment on the day. You want us to project it? Okay. Have you seen a question? The sessions were informative or uh, suggested that we are. It's supposed to be this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is that. Mine was asking the deputy. Thank you. 